Hi, Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond for the match highlights in the fifth and final game of the Google DeepMind Challenge. Michael Lee all had won game four, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat, and came into this final game uh, with, a, with a pretty clear game plan. Can yes. we uh, explain what the plan was and how it well, worked? There were already signs of it, I think, from game number two. Okay. Um, but uh, at first, uh, Lee Sedol was just playing it with white. Um, kind of an Amashi strategy, like taking territory and then invading the Moyo. Um, which is usually played with white, but uh, in this game he was playing it with black, and I was sort of, I did foresee that sort of. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was thinking maybe he would do it, but since it's usually not a strategy that's played with black, I was sort of um, not quite sure whether he would play for territory, as he did. We can already see that black is taking territory in two corners, mm -hmm. um, playing an opening that is very oriented towards territory. Um, or I thought still maybe he would try a fighting style opening, which mm -hmm. didn't really work in the first game. Right. And it didn't work in the third game either. So um, I think in the fourth game, he really decided that um, he could take territory and um, exploit the weakness maybe of AlphaGo by um, invading the Moyo and getting into a complicated fight there. So um, after all, it was the game plan in this game too. Um, I was sort of ex suspecting it, but I wasn't sure. So I was interested to see him actually using this plan. Um, it's a bit unusual for White to ignore this, but mm -hmm. White is playing for the whole board, so it's maybe a valid way for White to play. White plays the Hane. This is the strongest uh, attack, and with this move, White is basically already thinking of just sacrificing sure. these stones. So Black extends. White plays there. Now white has a base here. Mm -hmm. um, black has a nice territory here. Locally, it's quite a success for black. White did get the extra move here, which is going to influence the area here. And white has sente, so white put one stone here. Um, in return, black has a very nice territory here. Um, there is the point that it's, it, he already had a solid territory, so mm -hmm. he's just building on a solid territory, which is not the most efficient thing. Um, but I would be happy to be playing with black. Yeah, this and you like this. Because of all the territory. Right. Yeah. And then black slides. Um, this is also a natural move. Um, and white pincers. This is a pincer um, to make influence in this area with this behind it. So this is a very natural move. If white had played in the corner like this, it would have been um, just perfect for black to extend here, making a stable group. Uh, in the place where White had hoped to make some, uh, well, if not territory, a moyo at least. Mm -hmm. um, so White plays here. At this point, uh, Lee Settle played this move, which I, I sort of doubt, actually. It's, a, it's hard to say which is better, but since the latter is good for Black, I would have probably just played here. Mm -hmm. And if White plays here, Black can connect underneath. And the, honey, the latter here is good for Black. So white will either play here, or sometimes you see players play this. Um, but in that case, black gets... This leaves a lot of potential for these two black stones to move out mm -hmm. later in the game. Um, there's still the invasion in the 3-3 three, three point here. Mm -hmm. So I would be happy to play with black in this opening. In the actual game, um, black gave some territory back to white by playing this and pulling back. This move basically makes um, Miai, or um, Miai are interchangeable points. So mm -hmm. either that move, which is where white plays, so or if white plays on this side, side um, black, if black will play here, white extends. And again, this, this shape is kind of a double extension from the star point, and it's sort of inefficient when black jumps into the 3-3 three, three point. See. So this is more or less what black was aiming at. So it was correct for white to play on this side and allow black to cut. And in this shape, black has slightly more thickness compared to, to this shape, mm -hmm. which is a common joseki. Black has more thickness towards the center. Um, but white has these extra stones here, which sort of form some extra territory here. So black has lost some territory in return for this double 
uh, this line of stones here. Mm -hmm. um, which you're facing towards. Which are facing towards the center. So he's, he's sort of um, afraid of a center moyo a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's not really consistent with his plan to take as much territory as possible. So that's why I sort of uh, question this move. But it is a kind of a balanced play here. Okay. Then white plays on top here. Mm -hmm. um, this is a not natural follow-up move for this whole shape, the throwing away, because it's um, sort of planning to squeeze using the Aji of these stones, maybe not the connection, but at least um, squeeze black, reduce black's territory while building on the center. So it's a very natural move. And so black resists a little bit. And push through once, yeah. And now black points out to the left that reduces white's potential in this area of the board a great deal. Now something odd happens. Something odd happens. Um, is this, it here cut, first? He cut first. He cuts first. Um, the whole sequence here, um, just to um, point it out in the beginning, the whole sequence here will um, end up with black being very, very, very strong in this area. So the drawback of white sequence is that white's going to make very, black very solid here. Uh -huh. And that makes a difference when white plays moves like this or moves like, the, in the game, white chose this one. In either case, there's an, an entry point here. Okay. And so um, I would calculate white's loss on this side to be about five points when okay. white plays, starts playing moves like this. Here. And then here. And here. And white connected. Play to honey. And we can see the black position getting stronger and stronger. And none of this actually white works. Toe. It doesn't work. Actually, white is gaining a couple of points on this side, a few mm -hmm. points on this side. So it depends on really how, on how you count the mm -hmm. gain that black has on this side, which I think is pretty bad. But um, if, if, for instance, if this becomes black's territory or if nothing um, special happens here, then there is a slight gain for white on this side. So it, is, um, it sort of depends on how the game continues. In some cases, this is not going to be a loss at all. Um, the general idea is that white's lost so much on this side that mm -hmm. usually it's bad for white. But we can't really be 100% sure yet at this point. So sometimes this doesn't have such a um, terrible impact on the game. And there was a little concern when this was being played out during the game that maybe AlphaGo was going on tilt a little bit again. Well, I didn't think so. And, okay. and, well, the, the local moves sort of make sense. Mm -hmm. and, and even if you assume that it was a genuine mistake, mm -hmm. it would be a mistake um, such as the mistake in the center um, after the white move 78 in I the see. fourth game, right. um, where maybe AlphaGo didn't have the capacity to, to read one of the moves that was a low profile. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, the programmers will be able to dig into the program and find gotcha. that out later. And then after this, white plays here. Mm -hmm. um, this is a standard sequence here, throwing one stone away like mm -hmm. this, just to get the extra forcing moves on the outside to reduce black's territory. Black, this is more or less forced. And white can play an Atari on the top and then Atari on the side. So by sacrificing this one stone, white gets some extra forcing moves and a nice wall there. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, black has something in the vicinity of 40 points here, okay. about 10 points here, more than 10 points there. So, well, well slightly over 60 points. It's a lot of cash. It's all, it's all um, solid territory. And, it's and not going to, well, this is actually, if you only count the very solid territory, it's slightly less than 40 points. But in either case, it's, he's, black is in the vicinity of 60 points. So, Lisa Doe's plan is kind of working. He's got white to f create this big moyo. Yeah. And he's not going to jump mm -hmm. in, I guess. And this is not really territory yet, because black can jump right. in here. Uh, white has some territory here and some territory here. All of white's territory um, doesn't really add up to more than 30 points at this point. So black has a huge um, advantage in territory. And he played here, which was probably a mistake. Um, this turned out to be a bit deep. One would hope that white would be answering something like this, in which case black could jump. And this would really uh, completely reduce white's potential in this Damn. whole area. And even if white made some territory in the corner here, mm -hmm. it would be good enough for black to win. And this works nicely with it this rock-solid group. And we're sort of seeing, if you assume that white is continuing to try to take territory, um, you can see that the center is just disappearing right. quite nicely. Right. This would be too easy. Right. Um, so of course actually, what, um, what black should have done is black should not have been so greedy, maybe, and played something closer to the center, which would be 
not as effective when white compared to the diagram I just showed, the variation I just showed, but it's much more safe. Because white really can't. It's more difficult for white to break in through there. Um, if white, it, and le next black does have a very, very nice move here, which puts pressure on the corner. If white plays something like that, this move alone, without even following it up, um, has already reduced white's territory here. And it's very difficult for white to successfully attack now because black can sort of just dodge away. And treat it very lightly. And, um, it's a, a move on the top for a move below. Very difficult for white to surround it now. Mm -hmm. So black could even, uh, black has a choice then. He could play another move towards the center or he could jump in here, um, which is a very big territorial move. Mm -hmm. um, so this would be, I think this is a slight advantage for black. Mm -hmm. um, this move, it looked really natural, mm -hmm. um, but if you assume moves like this or moves like this, it's easy for black. But the move white played, this capping move, mm -hmm. was very, very good. Yeah, um, very it's sure. a move that um, actually uh, human players would play too. It's not as if it's um, especially a computer move, mm -hmm. um, but it's just perfect for this. Um, it's, it's an example of AlphaGo's strength. So anyone who was afraid that AlphaGo would sort of go berserk at mm -hmm. this point um, should be um, relieved of that um, worry at, by seeing this move. And I think your analysis during commentary was that was AlphaGo really just plays this whole sequence. It's very really nice. Nicely. It's sort of good style, you might say. Um, it's um, very natural moves. And white didn't even try to kill black. Uh, for instance, at this point, if white had played here, this would have been a very more severe. serious attempt to kill the black group. Right. Um, and it would um, entail some danger because after this, there would be the cut here later. And white stones in this area are not so strong. That means that black could possibly use that mm. to sort of move out into the center. And this move would be rather small as far as territory is concerned. So it was probably a, a wise way for white to play, just to play on the top and, and sort of make this, the width of this area thicker. Black plays the key point, and yes. And now black is alive. White continues to sort of squeeze black, and now it's completely, now uh, there's no doubt that this black group is alive, and white plays on top again. Mm -hmm. Again, it's good that you see that white is not um, connecting. Mm -hmm. uh, connecting is a bit heavy. Actually, once white has forced black to live here, uh, you can say that these two stones are not really all that important. Mm -hmm. It's not that white's um, going to give them up too easily. Sure. Um, but in some cases, white can afford to throw them away. So um, they're not as important as they were before. Mm -hmm. um, and white plays on the outside. Oh, actually, I think black played once here first and then lived. But it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, white plays on the top. The point is white gets a big... Um, this is already looking almost like territory. I think if we added one white move, it would be territory of close to 50 points. Mm -hmm. And so black had to come in. And white still had potential on the side in this, in this area. And the, this territory is very difficult to count, actually, because it, it, can, it, it, can, it decreases with every time black plays a move there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, it takes some time for black to get rid of the whole territory. So it's a, it becomes a very difficult end game to execute and very close already at this point. And I think uh, towards the end it was a half point difference at some point, but um, at least it'll last uh, a little bit. Um, AlphaGo, after its win was clinched, I think it did play some questionable moves, but again, it's a question of it was winning anyway. So maybe it was just playing the safer route. So this, this game from here and you were counting and, and the score, it was really interesting because there was a lot of moves, there were some swaps, uh, but in the, in the end, the score didn't really change for a really long time. Not very time. much. All the time, it was something like seven, eight points on the board, so it was really, really close. Right. Uh, it, was, it was a great... Uh, we, we thought we were actually going to have a countable game. Yeah, well, it was countable, <laughs> um, and they, was, they didn't count it. They just yeah. bothered because it was... Yeah. A, I think, I think the, the, they were saying it was a, like a point and a half. Was One, and a half, points, one yes. and a half points, yes. So, 
Uh, well, yet another uh, amazing game. Uh, I want to say thank you to you, Michael, for you know all of your just incredible analysis, uh, these game commentaries. Uh, they were all just exciting thank and you. tough games. Appreciate that. Uh, and congratulations uh, again to the entire AlphaGo team uh, and to Lisa Dahl. This was an amazing Thanks. week. Uh, really appreciate the attention to Go. I think it's really going to, as you said, uh, open up a new era uh, for the game, for yes. players, and uh, for artificial intelligence. So yes. we look forward to that. Yes. Uh, so I look forward to the next time I see you across yes. the board. Um, and thanks, uh, everybody, for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.